hope all y'all are having a blessed day. It is a stunningly beautiful day here on the mountain. We get up to the low 70s and the chickens had fun running around and the little chick is getting bigger. Tonight we are here with our next little project and this is going to be to launch my Kawandi Table Runner kit. I am going to be putting it together. I have uh, I have instructions that I'm writing and I've been working hard at it and taking pictures and all that. And I thought that we would sit over here at the cutting table this evening and I would show you how to do Kawandi by hand and show you the project that I'm making. And I'm excited to launch these kits. You will get a pile of scraps like this and the first kit is going to be total scrappy. So anything that I've got, I will cut up and you'll find all sorts of yummy goodies in your kit. Now I have laid out all the fabric on this top. The table runner is 15 inches by 40 inches. I thought that that was a nice size because I don't have a real big dining room table. So you're going to get a neutral background. This happens to be a batik and you're going to get approximately 175 grams of fabric. Now that is, it took me about this much to cover this generously. And I overlapped everything. And so I have all of that figured out for you. You're going to get the backing and you're going to get 175 grams of scraps for you to use. And you will also be getting some embroidery floss because traditional Kawandi is sewn together using embroidery floss. So I will pick out colors that I think will look nice with your scraps. Now Kawandi is meant to be a slow stitching, enjoyable experience. It's not meant to be doing this at a racer's speed. This is supposed to be slow and enjoyable. So. To begin with Kawandi, and I'm left-handed, so you might want to start at the other side, the other end. Your piece of backing will be oversized. You need to trim it down to 16 by 41, and then you are going to fold up and iron a half of an inch all the way around, half an inch hem, and then you're going to take your piece of batting and you're going to make sure that it fits in here. If it doesn't, you're going to trim it down you're going to baste it. You don't have to. You can use a spray baste or you can use just needle and thread and that's what I did. And if you're working on a flat surface, it's not mandatory that you baste, but because we have batting in the mix, where on the, the machine, the machine made Kawani that we did a while ago, that we did not baste anything down because there was no batting. So now that we've got something on the inside here that's going to move around a wee bit, you can either spray baste it or you can just hand baste it. And I just chose to hand baste. You are going to take your first piece and you're going to lay it down like this. I have my seam allowance turned under and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit more or a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, it's no big deal. What you want to do is you want to make sure the edges match. And if, if your piece is cockeyed and it meets over here, but this piece is going out like this, then just take your edge and pull it under until it matches and until you have a nice square piece in your corner. So you're going to take a length of your embroidery floss, however long you like it to be. You don't want it too long because it will not on you. And you're going to take a large needle that has a big eye and is easy to grab. And I, well, this is what I do. I pinch an edge. Basically, I, I do this. I put the needle over there like that. And then I pinch it with my finger so it's nice and thin. And then I push the eye down and there. Okay? Nice and easy. And we're going to tie a quick little knot here. This is a quilter's knot. It, you just, okay, like three, three is all you need. And you hold it like that and you go there. Okay, so there, now you got a little knot and you can 
be a little bit sneaky here and just work it through in between the batting and you want to come out pretty close to the corner and that'll get buried under there and I'm using all six strands of embroidery floss. The edges match up real good and this first round is going to be basically like a top stitch and I don't have a thimble. I've got them. I don't know where they are. You don't want to go real fast and you don't want to pull real tight. You're just going to make, I don't know, quarter inch stitches all the way around. And again, don't pull. You just want to make sure that this is folded up and matching the edge. And the thing with Kawandi is you want to get this edge all sewn down tightly so you don't so you don't lose any pieces okay so you're going to continue this in this fashion and obviously if you're right-handed you're probably going to start in the other direction so i apologize if it looks backwards and i will leave a link in the description box down below to a lovely person's blog post her name is dizzy quilter and she'd made a lovely blog entry about Kawandi and she included lots of resources that you can look at but with Kawandi you're going to do this all the way around basically top stitch around the edge of your whole piece and then when you come back to this point here you're going to take your finger but I did about half an inch over um, when we did it by machine. I come up to about here and I hung a right and I went this away. So with this basically if you're not using a sewing machine or if you don't know how far apart your stitches should be you want them to be about a finger's width. So that is what the gals that created Kawandi use. They use their fingers because they don't have rulers or anything consistent so they just use their fingers and it, that is perfectly perfectly okay. You might say, well, I got really big fingers or I got really tiny fingers. That is fine. Whatever your fingers are is fine. That piece is done for this part. Now we're going to take our next piece and you always want the same allowance going like this. Hello, Mr. Dinky. You want the raw edge down and to the right of your piece left-handed if you're right-handed I guess you'd want it going in the other direction and you can use pins if you like you know me and pins me and pins no bueno so you're just going to march on this away continue until you get all the way around so you just keep on a going and you can do running stitches if you like like that okay so there is my second piece I'm even tossing in blocks like this and you can use an iron you can also someone had left a comment my buddy laura from kentucky left a comment saying oh if your fingers get sore from doing all that finger pressing you can use one of these so if you have this plugged in you could have this sitting here next to your ironing mat and just go over here and roll it up with your little clover mini iron but for right now I'm going to use my fingers because they're working. If they get tired later on, I will plug that puppy in and see how it goes. And you want to try and keep your edge neat because these don't get binding. Okay, so that gets folded over like a so and like a so. And if it's a beautiful night, you take yourself a handful of this embroidery floss and your project, your little bag of scraps, and you go sit outside on the lawn or on the bench. Go sit by your creek if you've got one. Go sit outside with your kitties if you've got them and just enjoy God's beautiful day. I have a beautiful screened in porch that I could be sitting in right now. The lighting is much better in here, I believe. And again, this is not supposed to be hurry, 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 hurry. This is supposed to be something that is enjoyable. And you can use each piece if you want to make this a prayer project. You can certainly do that. You can say a prayer with every new piece. And your pieces don't have to be all lined up perfectly. These big stitches are fun. They're very, very easy to do. If you prefer something that is a little bit more dainty, you could certainly get by with using three of the six strands instead of all six. But I kind of like the way that the big stitches look. 
And you don't have to worry about this unfolding and all that because you're going to come back and you're going to keep sewing another finger's width away, about a half an inch that is, and you're going to keep on and going. See, now here's a pretty one, and yes, I will be including some salvages, and you can use these salvages, and you can have fun with them, because, I mean, look at that design. Manufacturers and fa fabric, fabric mills know that every inch counts, so they make their salvages fancy, so you can use them. You can use them for all different types of projects, but what's fun about this is now you only need to turn down one edge. See, you don't need to worry about turning down this edge because this won't fray. So this is a great use of your salvages. You don't have to use, you know, the plain white, but if it's got a fancy part to it, why not use it? And I recommend starting this project on a flat surface like this, just until you get the hang of it and just until you've got the first row done because the batting is moving around you don't want things shifting and then you get a big a big pucker or something i have some blocks that i didn't use and again you can pin these down if you prefer now if you've got nails you won't be able to use a regular thimble but they do make leather thimbles and they do make thimbles that are rings that just go around your finger fortunately the one that just goes around my finger is way too big for my finger and won't stay put and I can't find my leather ones. But even though, even though I'm taking my time and enjoying the process, this is working up quickly. Uh, this would be a fun project to do while you're watching TV because you don't really have to think. So if it's something you really wanted to watch, you really don't have to think too awful much about it. You're going to get all different types of fabrics. Here's a batik. And no, it's not square, but it doesn't really need to be square. I will turn the camera back on when I get to the corner. All right, I am about to hit the first corner, and you can certainly change out this embroidery floss to a different color anytime you like. I am doing this all, I'm using up one whole skein until, and then another and another. I want to see how many skeins it takes to do this so I know that I have given you enough in your kit. So now when you get to the corner, which is where we are right now, I have folded under an extra side of seam allowance. So I folded it over here, I folded it over here, and then I have folded it over here on this side as well. And I am deciding that this piece is not big enough, so I am going to use another one. And you've got plenty of them here in your kit. So that covers your corner. It meets on this side and it meets on this side. And that is as difficult as it gets. You can cut up some of the scraps. If there's a big piece and you only need a small piece, you can cut it up. And I've included some rather narrow pieces as well because there will be times, especially when you are getting closer to the inside where you're going to need some narrow pieces like this. And there'll be times where, especially on the inside of this piece, where you're going to need to fold down all four edges of this and then have it put down to cover four raw edges. But that is how you go around a corner. It is a little thick in the corner because you're going over two, let's see, you're going over two, four, six, eight. You're going through eight eight pieces of fabric here and you can tidy up your corners make it fit pretty now let's turn this around and we are good to go again and when i had to change thread a little while ago where was it you can see i i made a knot and i just kind of wove it through the batting and i popped it through the edge so that's how you can change your thread I will be making these in different colorways. I'll be doing, this This is total scrap. This is anything goes. If you are a fan of lots and lots of scraps and a very scrappy looking quilt, this is the kit for you. But I will be doing themes. I'll be doing spring, fall, winter, summer, patriotic. I can tell you that I'll I can do Christmassy type colors and Halloweeny type colors, but I don't particularly care for those types of fabric, so I don't have them in my stash. But I have a very, very large stash, and 
Much of it is scrap fabric. If you're curious, I buy scrap bags from the Soya Brothers. Soya Quilting in Las Vegas. I don't go there, obviously, but I do buy their scrap bags when they've got them. And if your fingers do not let you do hand sewing like this, you can machine it. You do not have to do this by hand. You saw me make the first one by machine and it came out just fine. And I can tell you, it's a great way to use up your scraps. And if you are in a warm climate, you don't necessarily need to put batting in between this. So if you wanted to make a bed quilt size, you could just use the two layers of fabric and that would be plenty, plenty warm enough. It'd be nice and light. I would suggest that you look through your scrap bag and look for small pieces and put them aside and look, look for unusually large pieces and put them aside this way. Should you need a particular size, you can, you can look for it. But I don't, I don't have any, any, I don't have any real crappy fabric it's all nice like the, this is this is free spirit this is moda this is what's her name pioneer woman uh, all these are high quality fabrics and even the, the few solids that are in here I have used for a couple of my quilts Waverly solids from Walmart and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them they're 100% cotton they're soft they're color fast and if that's all you can afford that's fine I'll be having a plaid kit, a flannel kit, patriotic spring, summer, fall, winter. I don't know what I would do for winter. I don't have that many whites. I usually avoid white fabric because I'm always afraid I'm going to get it dirty. I'm getting close to another corner here. And you only have to overlap them by about a quarter of an inch. If you've got a nice thin needle, you could do a running stitch with this. But it goes pretty quick. See, I'm already to the point where I need to add another piece to another corner here. So again, for the corner, we're going to be sewing, we're going to be folding down and finger pressing or ironing down three sides, unless one of them has a salvage. And then you only need to do a salvage side and two more. And if you fold it up and you realize it's not going to be big enough, pick another piece. There are no, no one's telling you, you got to use that piece right there. Let's see, that fits. That fits mucho bueno. Okay, so there is another corner. But being that the stitches are larger, and so much of this is, you know, you're just working with whatever piece comes up next, you don't have to worry about being extremely precise. If you want to use this piece here and this piece ends over here, you can overlap them. No one's going to, no one's going to know. And you can always toss in some of your own scraps. Okay, so there is another corner. And if you would like to use this for a buffet, I would either add another piece of batting or use some thinsulate. You can buy that stuff to make bowl cozies and pot holders and all of that stuff. I don't have any of it and I don't, I'm not going to be using this for a table runner. I might just hang it on the wall or I may put this up on my shop for sale. Who knows where it'll end up. I can tell you this is working up quickly so it doesn't take long and I like the process. It's relaxing and again each piece is another prayer for someone Oh, I think this would be a fine way to talk to God. We are back from whence we started. And again, I have another piece here that has folded, been folded over on three sides. And to make sure that that stays straight, that we cover both pieces like so. Now let's see if I can speed up. This is what I always do. I try and speed up to get to the end of the row before I run out of thread. I do that when I'm knitting, when I'm crocheting. Will it last until I reach the edge? At this point, you want to hang a sharp left and go this way. So at a finger's width, I mean, you can use your itty bitty finger if you prefer, but whatever finger you feel like grabbing, that's the one you're looking for. So I am actually going to make one short stitch here. And now I've got to add a new piece of thread. And at this point, 
what I will do is I will go underneath here and I'm just going to weave it in and out of the batting a few times. This is not going to be a real high tension piece. That's plenty, plenty of a knot. Another one and we're going to snake underneath here just like we did before until we get to the corner. And now I'm shooting for about half an inch, a centimeter, half an inch, finger thickness. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now we don't have to add any more pieces yet. We can just zoom running stitch along the edge. And now it gets much easier because you're not dealing with all that seam allowance. You don't have to worry about adding any more pieces until you get to about a half an inch. I would do one more row of stitches and then I'd add my next piece down here. There's also a similar technique that's a Japanese technique called boro and that is very much like kawandi but what you're doing is you're laying down your fabric and your batting and you're just laying pieces on and you're doing it raw edge and instead of doing a straight running stitch you are doing sashiko stitches on it. Okay, I wanted to come back and show you what to do if you run into a problem like this. I have a bit of a gaposis here. So what you do, you iron over three sides and you plop it right down there and you march on like nobody's business. The whole point of this process was to use up the little itty bitty tiny scraps that you had to make something so you could have an income for your family to sell or to you know give to a family member or or for a baby it could be any number of reasons and then you just continue on and if that happens again somewhere else well now you know what to do with it like i have a real skinny piece over here that's not a problem this will cover it but if it didn't you would just put another piece on top and no one will know. I am coming around with my third round and I've changed to a different color thread and now I need another piece. Again the right side or if you're left if you're right-handed you're going to be going in the other direction I would assume this would be your leading edge and that would be folded under a quarter of an inch but I'm left-handed so I'm going backwards. I've got this edge and this edge fold it over. Now I could choose to do this one right here and put a little patch here. So there are no rules here. So you could put that piece there if you want and then you could keep on going. Move this one over a touch and cut this one so it's under this one. And you don't want this too high up close to the last round of stitches because there'll be a big flap there that's not sewn down. If you do have excess up here, the one thing you want to make sure of is that your quarter inch is deep enough so it gets stuck there. And you know what? If it's not, I'll show you how to fix it. Take some thread, just do a quick stitch on it or run and stitch on it. Or you can actually go right along the edge there too applique stitch. So this is how you add new pieces on and then you just continue on as before until you need to add more thread or more pieces and you do more of the same. Okay we are nearing the end here and I wanted to show you where I was and when you get into the middle it's going to be a bit of a puzzle and now this this I had an old scrap piece of batting that I put in here and it was stretching out on me and I had a lot of excess I just cut out the batting like this I picked up the excess and I snipped it off close and then as you're getting in here you'll just pull these together like this while you're sewing I have folded things over now I have a real edge here this is not a raw edge, but I have some raw edges here. So what I'll do is I will put a patch that has the seam allowance turned down all the way around the piece and sit it on here. And then this section will be done. And then you move on and you know, you just continue with your sewing around and around and around. And as you near the edges of pieces, 
you stop and you put another piece down on top of it. Now, in this section here, I could probably easily get a big patch to fit in here and cover all the edges, but I'm not sure if I wanna do that yet. So you can see that we are inching closer and closer to the center here, and I'm making sure that all the pieces, their seams folded under. Then I'm going right here across to about here and then this away. So I'm just making sure that there's going to be enough space left in these pieces for me to fold them under or to put another piece over them. There's another little update. I am right here. And as you can see, I have everything except for this piece here with the seam allowance folded under and pinned so that as I do my stitching, I'll be catching the edges of all of these and then coming back down here and I'll have to add another piece to cover this and it will cover this whole little square here. Okay, we are down to the very last bit here. I have this patch here that's folded down on all four sides except for under here and then I needed one more little piece that would go over here. So again I ironed down the seam allowance on all four sides and I will be going to about here and then I'll be making a left and I'll be coming down this way and there'll probably be one more line of stitching that comes right up the middle. So here is the finished piece. I love the way it came out. It's very, very scrappy. It needs to be pressed well but I just, I love the texture on it. I love the way all the scraps work well together. I love the big stitching. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you will go check out the kits that I have available for sale in my shop and give this technique a try. It's so much fun and it really does bust up your scraps quickly. So I want to thank you so very much for coming along on this project with me. I hope that you have a very, very blessed day, a very blessed week, and I will see you right back here at 70 Acres Studio real soon with our next little project. God bless. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Campbell.